Let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Father, I just ask that you will and your word would come through me. That what I say would not be of me, but of you. And that it would touch someone's life, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. There. Better? All right. Um, as you probably all well know, this month's subject is walking with God. And first answer for a lot of people when you ask them, how do you walk with God? They'll tell you obedience. You know, be obedient to God. And there's a, quite a few other answers. But to, today I want to take a complete look at walking with God and what that really means and how to do it and how, how it comes about. First, a lot of us, a lot of us come to God with, a beginning knowledge and being told stuff that we slightly believe and not really sure we believe and we stay there for the rest of our life and then there's others that really seek the truth and they find it and then they are able to believe what they know and move on and move on it and to come to that realization we've got to everyone has to to really walk with God they have to truly believe they have to truly know what they know is the truth. And to know the truth is one of the most important things because without the truth, there is no solid rock which you, which you can stand. I see the world today as a giant quagmire. Everything is a giant quagmire. And there's, if you walk, on, if you walk anywhere, you can most likely are going to fall in over your head in something. And that something is not good 90% of the time. And then you have different religions, and they think they've got a little bit of a base, a little bit of a place to stand on. And they walk on that, and most of the time they're walking in their knees, up to their knees in junk. Even, sadly, most Christians. We never come to a place where we're actually standing outside of the quagmire and standing on a solid rock standing on the solid rock that we know is true for ourselves, that we 100% know without us out that this, what I believe, is true. Someone comes along, and in a few words, they can shake us to our very foundations of our faith with a few different things. And this is what happens because we never take the time to truly believe that we're, what we believe is true, to truly seek the truth and find the truth, to truly understand what we believe is true. A lot of religions won't even let you really ask those questions. But God, God wants you. The real God, the God above everything, wants you to ask questions. He, he loves when people search for the truth. And I mean truly search for the truth. He does not have any laws or regulations against seeking for the truth. If you want a question, you ask him. And that's one problem that I noticed in my own life. For a long time, I'd have doubts, massive doubts. And I just felt wrong for asking them these things or even bringing them up. And I just kind of hid them in my heart instead of being truthful to myself and saying, well, that's there. And Lord, I don't understand it. Lord, the help. It ha you have to come to a complete realization of the truth to be able to stand on the solid rock. And you can't really even begin to truly walk with God without having a true realization of the truth, knowing that what you know is the truth. And I think the best way to come to that realization is to get alone, because I, I know, get alone. You can read tons of stuff on the internet, look at tons of different stuff, and I've done that. I've searched for tons of different stuff on the internet, and you can get mixed reports. Now, you can get the truth, and you can get mixed reports with half-truth in there that really shake you to your very foundation. And then you find out later what, you've, what you were heard, told and understood is a half-truth or not a truth at all. So the, the only true way to really know the truth is to get alone and ask God, the one true God, because there is a one true God. There has to be a creator of everything. And if you don't believe there's a creator of everything, I put this challenge to you as well as those who think they know the one true God, to get alone to get alone, spend some time, maybe even go as far as fasting, to separate yourself, 
just at least one time in your life, one time, I challenge you to do this one time in your life, and get down and cry out with the sincerest, heartfelt cry, I want to know the truth. More than anything, I don't want lies. I don't want anything but the truth. And if you do that, you will be surprised by how fast God will answer you. How fast knowledge and understanding will become flooding into you. I've experienced it myself recently. At just beginning of flowing of knowledge and understanding of things that I never seen before, of things I couldn't even possibly, I couldn't believe at the time. And then I begin to really search into them, and it's like, whoa, I didn't come from me. I came from the one true God. And I challenge you today to do that. No matter what your religion, no matter what your beliefs, is time to get alone with God and ask for the truth. That is one massive step you have to take to truly begin to walk with God. And the second step is, once we get to that point, well, we, now we know the truth, and, well, what now? A lot of people will tell you that you have to read the Bible, which is definitely true, and you have to. It, the Bible is the word of truth, and it is the only book that when you read it, Gives freedom, gives true freedom. I've tried reading the Quran. I have. I have tried reading other religious books, and I tell you, it just doesn't do it for me. I've tried. I've seen. I've saw it, and I'll tell you, honest to God, this doesn't work. There's nothing in them. It's just, it's just, ugh. It, it, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like, ugh. Yeah. So, once you do that then you have to, to decide in your heart that you're actually going to have a personal relationship with God. A personal relationship with God. Now, what does that mean? Well, Jesus died on the cross that we might have our sins cleansed and that we might know God, have a personal relationship with God. He actually, a lot of people will go on and all about, you know, eternity and everlasting life. And... A lot of that stuff is true. You can get a lot of that different stuff in the Bible, but the most stated thing in the Bible for what eternity is, is that you might know God and Jesus Christ that came to the earth. That you might, that's eternity. Jesus said so in John, uh, I'm trying to remember, if John, was it John 15 or 16? I think it might have been 16. John 16 says, eternal life is that you might know God and him that he has sent to the earth, which is Jesus. That is eternal life. And we can begin to have that here on the earth right now. So how do we begin to know God? Well, first, we know that God is a perfect and holy and righteous being. And every time we sin, that takes us farther away from God. And when we take ourselves farther away from God the exact opposite begins to happen in us of what is perfect. And perfectness is a whole myriad of wonderful things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And just, you can read the Bible. Perfectness, perfect stuff is amazing. Perfectness cast out all fear. Perfect love cast out all fear. And God is perfect love. God is perfect. But when we have sin, it takes us farther away from that which is perfect. So the far, more sin we have in our life, the more stuff that we allow to block our communication with God, the less we'll have of happiness, the less we'll have of joy, the less we'll have of peace, and the less we'll have of long-suffering. People will get in our way and we'll be upset at them almost instantly. And we won't even understand why. We'll become, we become cra cr uh, what do they call that? crabby, nasty, mean, and upset at the entire world and upset at yourself. I've watched it over and over in my life. I've watched it over hundreds of people's life. The more sin you have in your life, the more crap you'll, the more crappy you'll feel. Despair will rule you. Hate will rule you. Bitterness will rule you. Fear will rule you. These things will rule your life because they are the exact opposite of God. And, and sin takes us away from God. So we have to go to God. And we have to... Get down and truly and honestly 
be honest with ourselves. See, God knows everything about you. But you'll be surprised how hard it is to admit everything to God. It took me a lot of, of pushing to actually admit the stuff that's in my life. I don't know, for some reason, even though I know that he knows everything, when I go to him in prayer, I have a tendency to try to hide something. And I'm pretty darn sure most people do too. Because the truth is, is we don't, we're not really happy with who we are. And we don't really want to know, we don't want God Almighty to know, you know, about us like that. But he already does. And until we actually go to him and say, God, I have a problem with just being a know-it-all. I know I do. And, and then just go into the details of that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I know you know it, but I have to admit it to you. And then, and then you ask him, God, deal with it in me. I don't want it anymore. You have to admit it. To, to admit it. Then you can say, I don't want it. You can't admit, you cannot say, I don't want it without admitting it. And you have to admit it to say, I don't want it. And then that gives God the power to come into your life and begin to take that out of you. Slowly, sometimes, and sometimes instantly. I've watched God take things out of people that I thought, yeah, they're never going to get free of that. Next thing you know, it's, they, they're completely free in life. Well, that just isn't fair. Because <laughs> I'm still struggling with this. Sometimes God does it instantly. Sometimes it's a hard, long-fought battle. <clears throat> so if we begin to confess our sins to him, and we can begin to honestly tell him we don't want this, like I have a problem with some things that I, my physical flesh desires beyond, I mean, just continuously desires, continuously desires. And I'd be honest with God, God, I want this. But I don't want to want it. I don't want to want it. Maybe for you, cigarettes. Maybe it might be for uh, alcohol or something else. Who knows what it is? There's a lot of things in our life that we want, that we know we don't actually really want. So we have to go to God and just say, God, I want this. You know I want this. And I've been lying to myself to tell myself I don't. I want this, but Lord, I don't want to want this. Please help me. Please take care of it. And sometimes he'll, boom, it's gone. Other times, it's a, he begins to work at you and work at you. And every time that you do that or that you take part of that or whatever, conviction will hit you because God, you told him you don't want it. And God will convict you and convict you and convict you and convict you until, I don't want this anymore. And that's a hard-fought battle, but it's a wonderful thing when it finally comes to that point. I don't want this anymore. Like I, I, like, I like just random action movies for a long time. You know, and now I'm like, I told God I wanted them. I, I, I didn't want to want them, but I, I just liked watching random action movies, whatever it be. And not R, but basically random action movies. And then God, I don't want this. And e every time I did, conviction, conviction. And then it get to the point where I think about watching a random action movie. Uh, I don't want a random action movie. No, thank you. And it's, it's a process. And I look back at it like, oh, wow. You're right. I don't want one anymore. That's it's awesome. Sweet. And that's the process. These are process. Everybody begins to say, talk about walking with God. They don't. They don't go into it because they, a lot of times we don't have a personal relationship, or we don't understand the process that we went through. And I believe a lot of it is the process of going through to have a personal walk with God because that's what changes you. We all want to instantly be, oh, walking with God, yeah. But it, it doesn't always work that way. And in fact, I don't think it ever really works that way, but that's only what I've seen. You know, God is all God of all power, and he can do instantly, anything instantly. I just wish he would do it in me. <laughs> but he says he's not a respecter of a person, but sometimes it seems like he does things instantly, other times he does it through a process. And that's probably something to do with our heart. And it almost definitely is something to do with us. It's not with him. So as we begin to clear our sins away, we will find that we have more joy, more peace, more happiness, more long-suffering, more, yeah, life becomes better as a round hole. And at first that thought is like, okay, that kind of blows the mind because no longer do I do the things I want to do. But still, I have more life and more happiness in me. That's because God 
has set the rules and regulations in the world and because he's a perfect God and you don't want to be separated from him. When you're separated from God, you can't have happiness and peace because that's what he is. So then another wonderful step is most people, I do not understand why they do not do this. I, I understand why I didn't do it and I guess that's why most people did. It's actually talking to God as if he was there. He is the creator of all of the universe. I understand this. He is everything. I understand he is wonderful, powerful, and it is a scary thought to even think that you could possibly talk to God as if he was there and him answer back to you. But believe it or not, it is possible. I do it on a daily basis. And when you first begin, sometimes, a lot of times, it'll be yourself answering you. But you just say, God, I know your word is real. I know what you say is real. And you just talk to him. God, I don't like what he did. No, I don't like what he just did. And, but I'll give that to you. And God will tell you, well, you did this. Oh, did you ever think about that? And you're like, yeah, but he did that. And God will be like, yeah, but you did this too. And, and a lot of times the conversation you'll find is correction. And it's not fun most of the time. Talking with God can be wonderful and awesome, but a lot of times it's not fun because 95% of the time is he's going to correct you. He's not going to take your side like your mother does. He's not going to take the side like your father does or your best friend. He's going to do tell you as it is, straight as it is. And that is so wonderful, but it's also scary. So that might be another reason why sometimes we don't like talking to God. And as the more you begin to actually, I want to encourage you to actually to begin to talk to God. Just to begin to talk to him as if he was there. And you'll be surprised that he will begin to answer you. And he'll begin to talk to you. But then another thing is what happens is sometimes we'll answer ourselves and think that God is the one to talk to us. And we'll believe they're expecting this thing to happen. Or whatever this, whatever he what we think he told us to happen. It doesn't happen. And then we get all despaired, and then we decide not to talk to him anymore. That wasn't God. That was you. God's stuff bears fruit. And you can tell. It will eventually bear fruit. Whatever, if God says something, it bears fruit. And there's a lot of things that God's told me, and I'd be like, that was Daniel. And next thing you know, bared fruit. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. And... God is, wants to have a personal communication with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to correct you. He wants to tell you, I love you, when you do love him back. He loves you more than anything. He wants to have that personal, cohesive, that cohesive relationship with you. That is how you walk with God, is by knowing him. You ha and what is knowing? Knowing is a physical thing that we have. And how does knowing... Okay. Here's a, here's a good example of knowing. Um, my father and mother tell me not to step in front of a train when I'm two years old. Uh, now we got trains that go 200 miles per hour on mag rails. That's not going to be a very pretty sight if I, hit, if I step in front of a train. But as a two-year-old, I'm not going to understand exactly what that means, especially if we're not anywhere near a train. Well, I'm not going to, what's a train? Why would I die if I step in front of a train? What is death? You know, all these wonderful questions. But as I get older, I begin to understand, well, in velocity, inertia, weight. Yeah, if I step in front of that train, I'm going to end up dead. So, but at first we don't understand that. And then, then we begin to have a knowing and an understanding that, yeah, a train's going to crush me if I step in front of it. Um, that if I step in front of it in 10 feet, there's no way that pilot can, even if he sees me, hit the brakes and it'll stop. It'll still slam me good. So the reality is, is some of us have a slight knowing of God. A slight knowing of God. So let's say i never seen a train. I've never seen uh, anything about a train. I don't know anything about rails. I don't know anything about it at all. But I do understand velocity, I understand do inertia, and I do understand weight. And I understand that the train is super heavy, and I understand that the train is traveling super fast, and that its inertia is going to carry it forward. And therefore, if I step in front of it, it's going to crush me. Therefore, that is my entire understanding of that train. 
that it is a deadly device. And I have no idea why it's actually made. All I know is it's a deadly device. If you step in front of it, you're going to die. And that's a lot of people's complete understanding of God. They, they know he exists, and they think he is a deadly person that's going to crush you the instant you step out of his will. But that's because they don't take the time to truly know him. They don't take the time to seek the truth. Because when you seek the truth, we learn that God has a million different of knowing about him that you can know about him because he's infinitely. And you can begin to, your knowing of him will never stop. And just like, well, how do I get to know about a train? Well, um, probably the easiest way right away is to open, uh, open up the internet and go type train. Okay, now I've got pictures. Now I've got videos. And I've got understanding of that train. And, okay, now I understand what a train is after just a little bit. But if I really want to truly understand a train, I go up to it. I go to where a train is. I walk in and out. I travel on a train. And guess what? I know what a train is. There's not that many facets of a train that you cannot know unless you really want to get into all the math and how it goes. And that don't take much long, that long either, especially with a mag train. It's just a bunch of electricity going down the rail that repels magnets that suits it forward. At least that's my understanding. It might not be right. Anyway, but the same thing with God. To know God, like I said, you've got to talk with him. And the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembers whatsoever he said unto you. So during your talking, the Holy Spirit will bring back the remembrance. When you're doing something, something that God told you, he'll bring it back to your remembrance. Same thing with the Bible. The Bible, when I began to memorize the Bible, when I began to really begin to search, search into the word, I found out that a lot of times when God talked to me, it'd be right along the word. And he would be bringing, and the Holy Spirit would be bringing back to my remembrance certain scripture verses. And the more I learned, the more these scripture verses became part of my life, and the more understanding I began, began to have with them. And because I, I talk continuously with God every day, a in, day out, I talk to God. I have a personal relationship with God. And a lot of people cannot say that because they do not believe God wants to have that personal relationship. That is a walk with God. Now, there is things that I do that will make it hard for me to talk to God. And another thing I have a bad problem with doing is turning God into a yes ball, an eight ball. And that don't work. God don't have like that when I go, hey, God, will this, will this, what will happen if I do this? And no, God wants to continue to actually, he's not a one-line phrase person. When he talks to you, it, sometimes it'll be simple line, one or two words, but a lot of times it's a continuous talk. And a lot of times we don't want to sit there and listen to God for that long of a time. And God wants to talk to you even more than you want to talk to him. That is what knowing God, that is how you begin to walk with God. If you could, and also, if you continuously read the Word, you'll begin to see other facets, facets of Him. Uh, the Word is a giant picture book of God. If you begin to read the Word all the way through and then continuously read it, and, and then it will start revealing things with you. I've read scriptures over and over, and next thing you know, I read them again, and wow, it comes to life it's like it wasn't there before. Because he quickens things to us. And that, that helps with our knowing with God. And the more we know God, the more we can walk with him. And the more he'll show himself and reveal himself to us, and the more we know him. That is walking with God. And eventually it gets to the point where what has happened with God's not a respecter of persons. It happens that we leave our physical body, in the body or out of the body, actually. I'm not sure. You, and you will become to meet God face to face. And 90% of the time, you're going to end up on your face in front of him as he speaks words into you. Sometimes correction, sometimes life. Actually, I think it's both. Word correction is life, if you ask me. And this knowing is a different level because you might have read about it, the train and all that, but until you get to know the train, I mean, actually go there and see the train, there's a difference from just reading and seeing pictures. And the same thing with God. But that, to get to that point, you have to continuously walk forward with God. You have to be, you have to say, you have to have that willing spirit to change your life the way it is now, to put away side things, that distractions, the things that a lot of times we have are so busy, we don't have the time to talk to God. We don't have the time for him to 
we, should, we use him as an eight ball regularly. He, with his word, we might not actually even talk to him, but we go to his word, and his word has preset things already set. That's how we see it. God's word is already preset, and we go down, and there, oh, there, there's my eight ball reading for the day. And that's exactly how we treat God, because we don't want to spend the time to get to know him. It's just like some random girl off the street. You don't really want to get to know her. Not really. But you, you fall in love with her, and next thing you get married to her, and guess what? You want to spend all the time in the world with her. You want to spend forever with her. I know because I'm married, and my wife is gone right now in St. Louis, and it's killing me. I mean, it's like, ah, my entire body's like, oh, Catherine, where are you? <laughs> it is, because I love her, and I love talking to her. Now, there'll be times that I get busy working, and I won't have time for her, and it hurts, and it hurts both of us. And the same thing happens to God. When you begin to truly want to know him, you begin to love him. The one scripture verse that everyone always uh, uh, repeats is, you know, you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. But it says, hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and you should love him with all the mind, soul, and strength. See, the first commandment is hear. Hear. Hear ye. It's you have to hear God to love him. How are you going to know somebody you don't speak to? How are you going to love somebody you don't know? It's impossible. It really is impossible. You can strive to love somebody that you don't know, but it just isn't going to happen. So you have to spend that time. You have to be willing to spend that time to change your lifestyle, to change the, who you are. After you have sought, you have to be, first off, you have to be really willing to spend the time to seek the truth. And sad truth is, is 90% of the world will not be willing to spend that time. Will you be willing to spend that time to seek the truth? That's only, only you can decide that. But 90% of the world is fine with where they're at, what they're doing, and living in their own little world, walking the set path before them, and not getting off that path and finding, their own, finding the truth for themselves. There's five questions that I think I've mentioned before here that everybody asks in their lifetime. And from the moment they're born, they, they begin to ask this. Who am I? Why am I here? How did this earth get here? And what is my purpose? Or something like that. Anyway, oh, I can't always remember. Oh, well, Lord, help me remember them. Anyway, the reality is, is whoever answers these questions for you, anyone, whoever answers who you are, why you're here, and how this earth got here, is going to basically dominate your life. They're going to control every, way, every single thing you think and say. Uh, a Muslim truly believes that he's here so he can um, obey Muhammad and eventually uh, do some great deed and end up with seven or how many virgins in heaven that become virgins every time. And that, that's what he honestly believes is because he's been told. That's the truth he knows. And whoever controls what you believe on those five questions, or four questions, they control your life. And a lot of times we're willing to let them control our lives because we're not really willing to spend the time to find those answers to those four questions for ourselves. And you have to spend the time to know the truth. Otherwise, your life is going to be controlled by somebody else. No matter what you do, your life is going to end up being controlled by somebody else if you don't know the truth. And you don't want that. You want, to give, you want to be solid on what you know. Well, maybe you don't. But that's your choice. Uh, but, well, that's pretty much all I really have to say because I want you to know the truth and I want you to know God as a personal level. And, I want, and there's, these are the, the th they're just so simple, these simple steps of knowing God. And once you begin to know God more and more and you continue to walk and talk with him, then life begins to change. You might not have super miracles at first, and you might never even have super miracles, but guess what? Because you know God, your life will be different. And the more you know God, the more life will be different. And sometimes it's just a simple, continuous walk that doesn't seem like it's big, much that big of a difference. But when you look back at your life, wow, I'm nothing like I was before at all, ever. I mean, just completely different. And that's massively true in my life. Because I decided this year that 
uh, you know, God, I want you more than anything. It, my dad preached a sermon last night. I will because I want to. And that really touched me. It really hit me hard. And it's so true. I will because I want to. You will do what you want. You are doing what you want, and you will always do what you want, even if you will tell yourself that you're not doing what you want, that you don't want to be the way you are. The reality is, is that you want to. And until you admit that you want to, then you can't begin to change what you want. And a lot of people will lie to themselves continuously and tell them that they want something that they don't want. So you've got to seek truth. And once you find it, you've got to stand on it and continue to seek truth. And you have to set your own path. You cannot let people tell you this and that. You have to do it for yourself. Every, every man is appointed unto, unto, every man will die once. And every man will stand before judgment on their own two feet. You will not be able to say, well, my mom told me this in front of God. Because it's just not going to fly. And the Sigmund Freud thing, well, you're like this because in your childhood this happened and that happened. Well, you can let this and that control your life. But I've watched people that have had some really, really horrible things happen in their childhood. And guess what? They are amazing people today. I mean, just look at the one guy with no arms and no legs. He's married, he has a wonderful life, and he does everything extreme. I've watched some of the things, I'm like, yeah, that, that, that's, that's pretty extreme. And he could let his disabilities control him. You can let your disabilities control you, and 90% of you do. 90% of us do. I let things that mental blocks in my mind control me on a daily basis. But he chose to overstep his Sigmund Freud mentality of it was their fault, not really mine, and took responsibility for himself and decided to go, well, you know what? I'm going to do it. And he did exactly what he wanted. And he is still the only one he wants, and it's amazing. And you can do the same. You just have to choose in your own mind, in your own heart, that, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to let my childhood control me. I'm not going to let other people make excuses for me. I'm not going to let myself make excuses for me. And that is how it's going to work. I'm going to do, I'm going to take responsibility for myself. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to seek truth. And that's what I want to challenge you. It, this whole sermon's a challenge for you to do that today. Will you have enough guts just once in your lifetime to Put away the food, get out of, get out of er, er, everything in the world or whatever you're doing, and set apart a time for a whole day and just say, God, or if you're real, reveal yourself to me, and I want to know the truth. And no matter what religion you are, no matter what background you're from, just do that. And you'll be amazed at the things that he tells you, the things that he shows you. Some people are lucky enough, blessed enough, I should say, to have a complete encounter with God on the first time they do that. I've heard about it. I mean, complete and total encounter. Boom, right up in the throne room, talking directly to God. And all like, oh, yeah, lucky. But other people, it's a long battle of finding the truth. But I challenge you to do that. Not using drugs, not using anything, but complete separation from this world. And just, no, no, not eating, just a little bit, of, just drink water, and then set apart in a quiet place and begin to cry out 100% solidly, God, I want to know you. And then after he reveals himself, if you're real God, reveal yourself, you know. And after he reveals yourself, because he will. If, if he doesn't, then I'm wrong. And you lost nothing. I mean, you lost absolutely nothing. You lost one day in your life. Wow. But if I'm right, if you do it, and he reveals yourself, there's an entire new world that opens to you. And this happens for anyone, any religion. If he does, your entire world will be shaken. And you may lose a lot, but you'll gain a whole lot more. You may lose your family, depending on what your religion is. You may lose your family, you may lose your friends, I'm not going to lie. But you will gain the most important thing in the world, and that's a personal relationship with God. And 
it will be a thousand times worth it. So I just challenge you that today. That is how you begin your walk with God, and that's what we need to do. And that is what I have to say. Have a nice day. I challenge you. Take it.